Well, I spent a few hours poking around online, seeing what was available you know, by way of power resistors like this. And it seems that the modern ones are only available in 5K, which is a little too small, and 7.5K, which is a bit too big, and that's what I've got in here now. On the positive side, it turns out that 50 watt, 7500 ohm resistors, pretty much look just like this, are on sale at Allied Electronics for about half price. So I ordered up half a dozen or so, which should be enough to cover all my sets. And I also got half a dozen 20K, 20 watt resistors to put in parallel like I did here. Now, <laughs> it's a saying, I can't leave this like this because it's not exactly safe and what do you know I've already shocked myself see a nice little burn mark there I was reaching around to get the uh, horizontal linearity control down here and my hand brushed that uh, I actually brushed this first and didn't feel anything because there's no path of conduction until I was brushing against that and then reached around and touched the chassis which is ground and then it went right through my thumb and uh, it's not a whole lot of voltage. It wasn't like the full 9,000 volts coming out of the flyback, but uh, a few hundred volts at least. It's the first time I've shocked myself in quite some time. and uh, I'm glad it was just through my hand because it just tingled for a while and it's no big deal. Other than a little red mark. Definitely would have been much worse if I had touched that with one hand and ground with the other hand. Uh, so definitely got to be very careful with this stuff. Don't do what I've been doing. Don't run this with this uh, cover off. Don't leave parts sticking out like that. Very bad idea. Oh, I should also mention that there is also um, an adjustable type like I used in the RCA 630TS where they expose part of this and there's an adjustable slider. However, if you get the 10K 50 watt flavor, there is no 7.5K. It's either 5K or 10K. If you go with the 10K 50 watt and adjust it down so you get about 5.5K, keep in mind that you reduce the power rating of the resistor proportionally to the position of the slider. So if you knock it from 10K down to around 5K, you've just made your 50 watt resistor into a 25 watt resistor. So you'd really need to go up to like a 75 or 100 watt adjustable resistor, which are really expensive and it's so big they wouldn't even fit in here anyway. So that's why I concluded that the only viable option I had was to go with two resistors in parallel. 10 BP4, 10 inch black and white picture tube that I found in the basement of an old TV radio repair shop. And I've already tested this. I got this two or three years ago and the neck on it had a nice blue glow indicating that gas had leaked in there. That blue glow is the ionizing nitrogen I believe. But it showed good emissions, and I think the grid control was kind of non-existent. Um, because what happens is when that air gets it gets in there and it ionizes, it actually increases conduction, but uh, prevents the grid from doing its job. And eventually the filament will burn out too, it'll get all oxidized. But what I want to see is how will it actually work in a set. And since I just so happen to have a set that uses that very CRT up on the workbench right now, I'm going to pop this one out and put that one in and see what happens. I just finished installing what I believe is a gassy CRT. Let's give it a try and see what happens. I've never actually done this before, so I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen. Alright, here it goes. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, we're not going to get too far because I will show you what just happened. At least I hope I can reproduce it because I may have just built, burned the filament down and it won't happen again, but let's give it a try. So turning it on now, what happened before was it was arcing and sparking. Yeah, there it goes. I think that might have just been the filament burning out. No, no, it's still going. Although I think that's just, I don't think the filament's going at all. I think that's just arcing between the uh, internal elements. There's no filament at all. The set is actually fully powered up now and there's nothing on the screen. 
So yeah, that that filament, I'm pretty darn sure, is gone. Well, it's hard to say. There is a little bit of an orange glow down in there. <laughs> I think it might be the filament, but the gun is flipping out. I was hoping we would get at least a little something on the screen, but nope. Oh, wait a minute. Jeez. I forgot I didn't adjust the ion trap. Hang on. I think it's going to happen. Oh well, it was a long shot. At least we got a little bit of a light show. I think there is still a filament alive down in there though. I think what's happening is all those gas molecules in there are just really blocking any electrons. From getting through to the face of the CRT. Oh uh, well, I suppose it's just going to be another CRT for the scrap heap. While I have the CRT taken out of the chassis, I'm going to try to quickly run through what's left. First up, tuner's coming out. Got three little wires coming out down here, and then the output of the tuner comes out here and goes right into a tube socket. So if I take those four wires out, and take these knobs off, and undo a few screws, the whole thing should just plop right out. And what else? Well. I mentioned before that there are some power resistors inside these IF cans. So if I get out a little nut driver and take out the nuts that hold those shields on, I can pop them out and get at the power resistors in there. Also, I want to take a little peek at the mica caps. I think they're just those exposed type of mica caps that go bad in radios sometimes. And uh, the video I have seems to be working fine, but the audio kind of stinks, so you never know. That might be uh, something worth taking a look at, too. And once that's all back together, do an alignment, and I should have a bunch of power resistors coming in tomorrow to uh, clean up that ugliness down there in the high voltage cage area. All right, now I can finally take a closer look inside this tuner. So one, when I've been adjusting the fine tuning to this outer shaft here, it rotates this plastic disc, which is essentially the dielectric between two metal plates forming a, a small capacitor. Something seems to be shorting out or scraping inside there. So I'm gonna see what's up with that. To get this drum, to get at that, I want to get the drum out. To do that, take the screw off, takes this piece of spring steel out, and then do the same on the back. Get this drum out, and uh, maybe I can also ease up on this tension a little bit on this roller, so it's not quite so hard to change channels. I was finally able to pop this thing apart. This piece of spring steel was especially difficult to get out. I ended up having to take a little screwdriver and put it against these fingers here and just keep tapping at it and slowly it worked its way out and popped loose. And I got the whole drum out. I just slid off the outer shaft and there's that piece of plastic that forms that fine tuning capacitor and I got a feeling that all that's wrong with this is just all that dried grease. I believe this piece of metal here rides against the shaft and needs to make good contact to ground it to form one half of the capacitor. So get all that cleaned up, spray this thing down with 
contact cleaner and do the same on this and also want to take a look at the electronics not a whole lot in here but uh, I have done this a few times before and all the resistors are usually pretty far off on the other hand I don't think they're super critical because if you notice none of them have any gold or silver bands meaning they're 20 percent but uh, I've seen them drift pretty far off But uh, if I do change them out, I'll definitely have to uh, do an alignment, which I was planning on doing anyways. Huh, this is faded here, but I think the stamp says aligned, and then there's probably a date on it. It's manufacturing date, probably October 15th, 1948, I'm guessing. And I noticed on the back it says here, patents applied for. It turns out that I wasn't quite right with my description of how the fine tuning works. It has nothing to do with this metal here or that clip or this making ground. That's the capacitor. Those two metal plates. And this sits in between them and rotates around. And because of the way it's shaped, here we've got a maximum capacitance. And then here we've got a minimum. So I'm guessing there must have maybe been some gunk in here, maybe some little bits of debris, um, flakes of solder, something like that. And as I was rotating this, those were shorting something out in here. Um, but I don't think it was anything to do with that, that shaft. Uh, at any rate, uh, I've been spraying everything with some degreaser, and I've got all the old grease and gunk off of these shafts. So I'll put it back together, use some white lithium grease, should work a lot more smoothly, and uh, I still have some cleanup to do in here. Like I noticed down in here, I think this is a piece that um, I guess would get, would get thunked a bit <laughs> from this going around, and I noticed there are some metal flakes. I think bits of this actually broke off because so it was rotating around with so much force. And I think that might have been what was shorting out um, some of those little bits of metal I've been finding inside here. Turns out there was only one resistor that was really far off in here and I replaced it. Otherwise I just cleaned it up good and have reinstalled the drum now without that uh, piece of spring steel in the roller. You can see it rotates quite nicely. Got uh, lithium grease in there, the fine tuning shaft uh, rotates fine now. So, what's left is to put the uh, tensioning spring back on. As you recall, this is really, really stiff. So, I think I'm going to try to see if I can bend this back a little bit to reduce that tension, or otherwise, I do have a spare tuner or two lying around here somewhere. And maybe I can pop the spring out of those. Maybe it won't have quite as much tension on it. All right, got a big old box of Allied Electronics a little while ago. Much bigger than I was expecting, but they probably have certain sizes of boxes, so they used one that was bigger than was really needed. Whatever. All right. Now, they had a few items on sale. They said were uh, excess inventory, although some of them only had an inventory in the single or double digits, so I'm not really sure what excess inventory means. And there were a few other odds and ends that I needed, so I went ahead and ordered them up. So these would be the Omite resistors. At first I was puzzled because I thought these were like the white cement type, but then I realized, oh, they were in individual boxes. <laughs> so I'm actually just looking at white cardboard boxes, not the actual resistors themselves. Let's see if I can get one out. Here's one of the new resistors, and here's the original by way of comparison. So I guess they got better with resistor technology, so these can both dissipate 50 watts even though the old one's larger. Now the diameter doesn't really concern me, but 
The original was a little bit more than half an inch longer. I'm hoping I can reuse the original mounting hardware though, because I did not pick any new hardware up. That's a seven and a half K. These were on sale half off, so that's what I went with. And I also picked up a bunch of these, which are about twice as much wattage as I need. 20k at 20 watt, 20k at 10 watt would have been fine, but these were on sale too, so I'll put these two in parallel, and that should work out just fine. In fact, it's what I've got in the set right now. Now, if you get a chance, I suggest checking out Allied, because they have a lot of stuff on sale. For example, 10 watt, or sorry, 100 ohm, 3 watt metal oxide resistors. I think these were 3 cents each, so I got 50. I'm thinking maybe I should have gotten even more, but it should last me a long, long, long time. Typically each set I work on has one of these for the horizontal output tube. So I figure it's good for 50 sets right there. Oh, so uh, the most commonly used capacitor in vintage TVs, 0 0.047 microfarad at 630 volt. I think I got uh, 50 of these as well. Not quite three cents a piece, but uh, Decent price. Let's see what did this cost. I don't have the price on here. But uh, there's part number. You can check it out for yourself if you're interested. Here's the cleaned tuner, all reassembled. It rotates quite a bit more easily now. But before I put that back in the set, I want to deal with some other stuff because it'll free up some room. So as I mentioned before, I want to pop open these IF cans from the bottom, which will let me remove the covers from the other side, and I'll show you what's underneath. And then, something I've been putting off is replacing the electrolytics. I still have some temporary caps uh, tacked down in here. I want to get those cans and mount the capsule more securely than that. Unfortunately, it turns out my memory was a little bit faulty about this IF can construction. Unmounting the lugs below the chassis does not let this cover pop off. In order to do that, you have to unsolder all the leads, remove the can, and there's a second nut you have to remove. If you can get that far, and then you can see what's inside. So here's one from another set I did a while ago. Just haven't reinstalled it yet. So there was a power resistor that was bad that I replaced. And there's one of those mica caps I was talking about that are just exposed to the elements. And can easily go bad. I think that's the value printed on it. it looks like 95 maybe? I'm not sure if they show it on the schematic or not. Yeah, they do good. So if I would ever have to replace these, so this must be that can. So there's a 95 and there's a 6.8k power resistor. So you see each of these cans, 2.7k power resistor inside there, 5.6 here. So they snuck some components inside these cans is what I'm getting at besides just these coils. And uh, at least in this other set they tested bad. Now let's see. Okay, we got a blocking capacitor there. So if I put my ohmmeter between A and F, I should be able to measure that resistor without popping the can open. Same here. And yeah, same here. Now if these were in parallel with like a coil or some other a conductive component, that wouldn't be possible. But it looks like, yeah. It, uh, so I'll definitely do that before I uh, even think about opening these up. Alright, so I'll check those three power resistors in these three cans. If they seem, you know, within 20%, let's say. I'm not going to mess with them. I'll go ahead and do an alignment. And if the alignment goes well, I'm not going to bother to pop those open to check the mica caps not worth the hassle because each one of these cans has six wires you have to undo and uh, I've done it before it's quite tedious and you don't dare make a mistake so you don't want to burn up one of these coils 
I think I'm in the home stretch on this set. With the CRT out of the way and the tuner out, I'm also tackling a few rust spots in the chassis. It's not bad, but uh, I wanted to get those out while I've got the chance. So a little bit of navel jelly and a Q-tip applied here and there. Also have the new power resistors installed. A little bit shorter than the original, so I put a spacer in here. Nice and secure now. Uh, so that leads me to one other thing I need to tackle, which is I want to replace these guys. I've done a bunch of different techniques in the past, from sticking new ones underneath, which in this case I'm not crazy about doing because there's, I think, four sections in here, three in here, seven all together, and I'd, I'd like to keep the wiring and, and all that uh, as neat as possible, so I want to put the new caps inside here. So One te technique I've done is to remove the wires from below, undo the twist tabs, pull out the can, uncrimp the seal around the base, pull out the insides, put the new caps in, put the base back on, and recrimp the, the seam, reinstall it. Another is to cut it off in place with like a mini hack or a Dremel cutoff wheel. A little bit tougher in this case because the two are fairly close together. And then leave all the wiring intact below and restuff the caps from the top and then, you know, optionally put the, the can back on or leave it off. But uh, more recently, I've done kind of a hybrid of the two. These are from another Admiral 38 one chassis I've been tinkering around with. Um, in this case, I did unsolder the leads, uncrimp the base, and then mounted my new caps inside. But to cut the can open, what I did was instead of using a hacksaw or a Dremel cutoff wheel, I used a really sharp utility knife with a blade like this. Then I just slowly rocked it back and forth right at the shoulder and it turns out this hard steel is pretty easily able to cut through this soft aluminum without damaging it, giving you a real nice clean cut. So I can mount this, reconnect it, and once the set's operating I'm satisfied everything's good. I can glue these tops back on and it'll be darn near impossible to tell that that was ever cut open. I know it's a minor detail once the chassis is back in the set and most people would not care at all but I think it's fun to experiment with different techniques for doing this. Now since I have these two all ready to go I think I'll just remove these and pop these guys in here rather than restuff these right now. So I want to get this set done and off my workbench so I can get back to that GE coaxial set. I thought I'd have this set done in a couple days, not a couple weeks, so the sooner I get this done and out of here the better.